Hi guys, uh, good day to you. Today we're going to talk about plant-based protein sources. Uh, this is a very important topic so that now as organic farmers, we can save on our feed cost, all right? Because we always believe that, you know, every farmer deserves financial freedom. All right, so let's go straight to the topic. So what are the different plant-based protein sources? So by the way, this list of plants are, is not uh, exhaustive. I mean, so there could be many other sources of protein out there. But uh, what I am going to give you is the most popular and the most common, right? Good, so the first uh, of those uh, plant-based protein sources is duckweed. Okay, this is an aquatic fern actually. So the protein content is 35 to 45 percent. Okay, it's very high. Okay, so one kg of duckweed can fill up one hectare pond in 56 days. So one hectare is about uh, 10,000 square meters or approximately two and a half acres. All right, so in 56 days it can fill up uh, an entire hectare. They double their mass in less than two days. So imagine you will have uh, unlimited source of, source of protein for your animals. So can be fed to livestock, okay, children, uh, chicken, poultry, and fish in fresh form, fermented or processed into mash. Okay? In fact, uh, do not you put uh, protein oh, do not put uh, duckweed in a pond where you have tilapia they will just be finished by the tilapia unless you have a safety net wherein the tilapia has no access okay so eaten by people in Thailand interesting all right so so this is our duckweed so to culture duckweed is very easy you can have a pond which is about uh, just like in the photo here you can have a, a pond wherein uh, uh, one feet to two feet deep uh, one foot to two to two feet deep okay uh, and then you can scoop harvest the duckweed every other day all right the next is azola this is almost similar to duckweed okay it's an aquatic fern so the crowd protein is a little lower than the duckweed so 25 to 30 percent okay they double their mass in two to three days can be fed to fish poultry and livestock again in fresh or in fermented form similar with duckweed so the biomass is uh, 30 to 80 kg fresh weight per hectare okay so serves as biological herbicide in rice field by controlling sunlight penetration into the soil, preventing the germination of weeds. In fact, in other places, they have this rice duck azola, okay, combination combo, okay. So in a rice field, so at the end of the day, the duck, the rice, and the azola they benefit each other because uh, the azola can be source of nitrogen for the rice all right and can be fed to ducks as well okay if you like you can even put fish there so we have rice duck fish and azola combination okay it has been proven already in other places so cyanobacteria that's the blue green algae a nitrogen fixing bacteria lives inside the leaf cavities okay so another forage crop is renzoni okay renzoni is uh, has a crude protein content of 23 percent still very high can be fed again to animals in fresh form fermented or in process or process into mass the next forage crop is Fleminja, right? So also known as Malabalatong in, in the Philippines. Crowd protein is about 22.7%, okay? 
Now, this plant is a natural dewormer for livestock. So you don't have to buy, you know, dawa medicine for your livestock in order to deworm them. So you just feed them with flemengia. Can be fed to animals in fresh form, fermented, or processed into mass. So what's the method of propagation? Is through seeds. The rest are cuttings and sometimes the the zola and the duckweed you just need a little uh, starting stock okay by the way if you need some duckweed and uh, azola i have i have uh, azola and duckweed here in my at freddy's farm nairobi okay kenya the next is tricantera or uh, in the philippines we call this madre de agua okay so it's also known as Tricantera gig, gig, giganti, okay? So originated from Colombia and Venezuela. So potential harvest 40 to 60 tons per hectare, okay? So planting density 6,000 to 10,000 plants per hectare, okay? Use cuttings, okay? Uh, mode of propagation cuttings. So crude protein very high, 32 percent, much higher than. Uh, uh, flamingia and uh, renzoni okay can be fed to animals in fresh form fermented or processed into mash okay I, I have also cuttings here in Nairobi so if you like if you need cuttings of tricantera you leave me a message below so that I can uh, and your contact number so that I can uh, we can communicate all right as uh, but renzoni and uh, flamingia I don't have any seeds. Okay. Can replace 20% to 30% of commercial pigs and la other livestock diet. In fact, there was a research that was conducted and this was proven already. 20% to 30%. So if you can feed your animals with Trichantera, okay, and, uh, and the composition of that is 20% to 30%, that's a very big savings okay, for us farmers. In terms of our feed cost, remember, feeds uh, account to 80% of our cost. Okay, especially when we are rearing, uh, raising pigs, for example. So six kg of leaves consumed by pigs daily is equal to one kg savings on commercial feeds. You see, that's a very big saving, substantial saving. So when you plant Trichantera, ensure one meter by one meter distance between plants, right? Another forage crop is Indigofera, okay? Uh, this is another uh, source of protein. The protein content is about 24.8%, okay? Digestibility is 84.8% if we harvest every 30 days. Calcium. That's also 2.08%. Okay? Best for lactating animals like milking goats, dairy cows, uh, even uh, sows, okay? pigs. Can be fed to animals in fresh and fermented form. So one day we're going to discuss about on how do we ferment. Okay? We're going to make kimchi for our animals. Uh, way of propagation, seeds or cutting and another forage crop which is available here in Nairobi Kenya by the way is super napier I have I have it here at Freddy's farm Nairobi so digestibility is 90 per 95 percent if harvested with every 45 days longer than that uh, small ruminants uh, rabbits might be difficult for them to digest okay but cows, yes, can be fed to animals in fresh and fermented form. Crude protein, 18%. The one that we have here locally in Kenya, the local napier, is only about 8%. Crude protein. Super napier or pachong, as they call it in Thailand. By, by the way, pachong originated in Thailand. All right. So it is a product of research in a university. Okay. Uh, another that is very available here in Kenya is uh, water hyacinth, okay? Uh, for many, for some, 
uh, water hyacinth is a you know a undesirable okay for ponds for lakes but in fact it has 20% crude protein okay note before making it into silage be sure to wash with chlorine okay so you just use 5 ml chlorine for every 100 liters of water okay and then after washing you air dry and process into silage the following day why the following day because at least now the chlorine has already evaporated or it's already gone okay good so that's it for today uh, our next topic will be free range poultry and uh, we are going to formulate also feeds for our chicken uh, i hope you enjoyed our session and if you have any question don't forget to leave a comment down below okay and if you have not yet subscribed to our youtube channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button including the bell button so that you will be notified every time we have a new video all right don't forget to like and share as well so until next time enjoy the rest of your day tom sifu yuse christu melele na melele amina mungu awabariki bye